Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage, and we're back with another of our 5-Minute Histories videos. And today I'm downtown at Saratoga and Holiday Streets, and we're going to talk about the building behind me, the C.J. Yaus Company building, a pioneer in paper box manufacturing for over 100 years. If you're following along real time, you know that it's just a few days before Valentine's Day. And so why are we making the comparison with box making in Valentine's Day? Um, well, uh, if you were to buy a box of chocolates or get a box of chocolates, say 50 years ago, the odds are pretty good that it would have been made in the building behind me at the Yaus Company. And in fact, the entire idea of putting fancy chocolates or fancy candies into fancy boxes and having the boxes be part of the marketing, that idea was pioneered by Yaus more than 100 years ago. So we're going to dive into that a little bit today. But have to start by saying that if my uh, math is right, today is our 200th video in our 5-Minute History uh, video series. I'm still trying to get my head around that. I want to say thank you to my colleagues Molly Ricks and Mary Zajac uh, for making these happen. And then want to say a special thank you to all of you who have hung in there with us over, uh, over the last many, many months, watched these videos and shared them, given us ideas. Um, thank you so much. All right, let's jump into this building. It was built in 19... 1915, but we're going to start our story back just after the Civil War with sugar, and particular sugar coming into Baltimore. America was developing a sweet tooth back then, and Baltimore was very well situated to take advantage of it. Um, we had sugar pouring in from the Caribbean and all over the world into the port, and early pioneers in the confectionery business, like J. F. John F. Berkmeyer and Sons, founded here in 1860, um, really took a small business into uh, one of national importance, making candy manufacture really nationally important um, in the years following the Civil War. Um, in addition to pioneering candy manufacturing, um, which incidentally was made uh, possible in Baltimore by our access to that pure cane sugar that was coming in, other candy manufacturers in cities that didn't have that same access would cut their sugar with minerals like gypsum. Can you imagine biting into a candy that had gypsum in it? I keep thinking of gypsum board and drywall, yuck, uh, but that's what they were doing. So in addition to confectioners in the middle of the 1800s, we had pioneering paper box company manufacturers. I think we did a video a number of months ago on the Raffle Company and its box making facility in South Baltimore, um, helping turn the uh, packaging business from one that relied on wooden crates into one that was using paper boxes. Well, C.J. Yaus uh, joined Raffle in that pioneering business. Um, C.J., Christopher Jacob, had come over from Germany at age three with his parents, and in 1869 had founded uh, the Box Company um, and did very, very well at it. In the 1880s, the city gave him accommodation uh, for all of the different types of boxes he was making. This is what they said he made. Plain and fancy boxes, paper lanterns, cornucopias, favors for the German, I don't know what they were, masquerade goods, Christmas tree ornaments, etc. So making lots of different things. Um, CJ died at, in his 50s in 1901 unfortunately, at a young age. His son, also CJ, Jacob, took over the company at age 19 and began to specialize in making boxes for the candy industry. In 1904, their, uh, their manufacturing facility downtown burned, but they rebuilt quickly. And in 1915, built this state-of-the-art facility uh, with big windows to bring in natural light where they made their uh, boxes predominantly for the candy makers of the country. This is an advertisement that they sent out to the National Confectioner's Journal um, in the early 1900s. They said, our boxes attract the eye of the buyer and increase the sales of the retailer. Um, uh, for sure they did. Um, so how did we get boxes and candy uh, compiled together so that sweethearts all over the world would line up outside of candy makers uh, to try to get the fanciest boxes and the best candies in them and pay top dollar for them? For that, we turn to the Victorian era. There's a great book about it called The History of Dessert, written by a gentleman uh, named Michael Crondall. Um, and here's what he, he quotes a, a Victorian era writer as this. A young man seemed to know by instinct that his surest weapon as a suitor is a box of candy. 
And then uh, that same Victorian writer goes on to compare beautifully wrapped boxes of candy with jewelry and perfume as, quote, intimate gifts that signified romantic intent. So already back then, uh, we've got Valentine's Day in the works. Um, Crondall, the author, goes on to surmise that, quote, there was an intriguing similarity between the elaborately enrobed boxes of candy and the layers of lace, crinoline, and silk that concealed the wooer's prize. Uh, well, what a racy comparison there. Back in Baltimore, our own Yao's company was making a similar sort of comparison, although in a much more subdued way. Um, they wrote in one of their ads, first impressions are important. Those who do not know the merits of your candy judge it first by the box. And then ending, our boxes feature individuality and quality that reflects the tempting sweets within. Uh, so a little bit more subdued, the same idea. And, uh, and well, well for that. The, some of their boxes, in fact, were hand-painted. Uh, very expensive, maybe under the sort of rubric that uh, love has no bounds or maybe even no upper price limit for boxes. Um, the, uh, the, uh, as a uh, somewhat aside, uh, the paper manufacturers had some competition in boxes for candies from the tin manufacturers, and Yao says one of its competitors was the tin decorating company here in Baltimore in Canton that was busy trying to make uh, boxes for candies. Some of us know that building today that's been rehabbed and is an apartment complex as Tin Deco, the tin decorating company. But back to Yao, uh, the Yao company had a long run, a hundred in six years, but in 1975, they closed their doors. This building became a distribution center for Diane's fashion for a while, and today is owned by the Real News Network, a national uh, news distribution agency. Um, they are planning a rehab project here, and already it's got Ida B's table, uh, a wonderful cater that, uh, that you can see behind me. Um, but I'm going to wrap up back to our 200th video, sort of a little celebration here, and the connection with Valentine's Day. 200 is certainly a lot of videos, uh, but it might not be as many as the number of, uh, of uh, cow tails that you have eaten from Getz's Candies, a hundred year old candy maker that's still going strong here in Baltimore. And 200 is a big number, but it might not be as many as thank yous that you get for either uh, for giving a box of caramelches caramel and marshmallow covered in chocolate from Reb's Candies, another 100-year-old candy manufacturer here in Baltimore. And 200 is a big number, but it might not be as big as the number of days that you'll remember getting a box of chocolate-covered strawberries from Walk and Foos Candies, yet another 100-year-old candy maker still going strong in Baltimore. And all of those candies, of course, coming in a beautiful and alluring paper box. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.